Hello and welcome to the channel. In a previous video, we've seen this simple registration system in Excel using a range of cells as entry form. And I forgot to mention that we could have separate cells here for the onboarding date to validate the day, month and year. Or we could use a day picker like this at the end that I've created, very easy to use. You can download it from my blog, the link is in the description. So in this video, we'll create a similar registration system, but using form controls to create the entry form. Some of the advantages of using form controls is that now we can move the form anywhere, we can make it look more professional, and also have added functionality, but on the other hand, it's a bit more complicated and it takes longer to set up. Starting with a new workbook, I'm gonna copy just that, and in the form sheet, we'll just add the controls anywhere in the sheet, and we're going to use ActiveX controls. If you want to know more about the difference between the regular form controls and the ActiveX controls, let me know in the comments and I will talk about that in a separate video. So let's add a label. And if we right click, we get the properties window for that control. And this is the same we get for user form controls. We'll see more about that in other video. And that's going to be onboarding date. Then we add a text box here and we copy paste that for the other fields, the employee name, employee role, department and manager. Note that we are in design mode up here. Then we need some buttons to send the form, clear the form or go to the registry, for example. Now I'm going to break the date into three boxes two combos for day and month and leave that for year. Now if we go to the Visual Basic Editor for that particular sheet form, you see we have here all the controls added. Combo box one, combo box two, the buttons and the labels and text boxes. So each control is now an object to which we can apply certain events in the same way we were doing with the worksheet or the workbook objects. And this is one of the differences between the ActiveX controls and the regular form controls. For example, we can trigger some macro when the value in the combo box changes, or when we click, double click, or get focus on loose focus, press the key, key up, key down, mouse up, mouse move, etc. Now we should change the name of the controls to easily identify each of them. We can do that in the properties window. So for example, this combo box for the day, I'm gonna call it, instead of combo box one, it's gonna be combo day. Now the same for month, this is gonna be combo month. Now this one is a text box for the year, so I'm gonna call it TB year. And the same for the employee name, I'll call it TV name. This will be TV role, etc. Now the department probably could be a combo box to choose a department from instead of this. So I'm going to just change it for a combo instead. And I'm going to call it combo department. Now the last one is going to be a text box manager. Now the labels, we probably don't need to change that because we are not going to do much with the labels. And the command buttons, we could also change it to command button send, command button clear, and command button rec registry, something like this. Now the first piece of code we probably want to write is to initialize the form. So we want to initialize some values in the combo boxes, the days, the months to choose from, or the departments. And for that we're going back to the Visual Basic Editor and we're gonna add that into a separate standard module. So I will call it init form. And first we're going to add the months to the combo box. So if we write sheet one, which is the sheet form, now we can target the combo months control and 
with the list property we can add an array of the months of the year January February but we actually don't need to write the days because Excel has already the list of the months of the year in a custom list so we just need to get that list and we do that with application get custom list contents and that's the list number four if we run the macro and we go back to the form and we are out of the design mode now we can see the combo box has been populated then we want to add the date for the selected month and at the beginning that's probably going to be the current month so let's get the current date today date is now and today month is the month of today date and we can declare of course today date as a date while today month is an integer now if we want to get the month name and add it to the combo box we would say sheet one combo box combo month equals month name of today month as we are always going to refer to sheet one i'm going to actually say we sheet one and we will just refer like that now we're going to get the number of days in that month but for that we also need the year so today year is going to be year of today date now the number of days in a month let's call it month days it's going to be, and I'm pasting this formula because I don't know it by heart, I have it in my cheat sheet, so it's taking the date with the date serial function using the year and the month. Now we're going to use a loop for, let's say, D for days from day one to month days, and we're going to populate combo day dot add item D next D and we're gonna end the with statement here and actually write it correctly up here and if we run the macro and go back to our form of out of design mode now we see now we see the combo box has been populated with the dates for July we just need to add the current date and year so let's go back combo day is going to be day of today date and text box year is going to be and that's today year so if we run the macro we should have now uh, the current date and and the combo boxes are populated with the days and months so we can choose from we can also populate the department box so let's go back and get inside this width we're gonna say combo department dot list it's gonna be an array and let's say for example we have HR finance production and you can of course get this from a range somewhere in the worksheet or from somewhere else okay we want to initialize the form whenever we open the workbook so I'm gonna go to this workbook select workbook open actually is selected by default and when the workbooks open we're gonna call or let's say call init form now we're going to program the buttons to send or clear the form or go to uh, the registry so I will add that to another module and here we will have send form and again we're going to work first with sheet one 
And first we're going to put the date together. So the send date is going to be dot combo day dot value and forward slash dot combo month dot value forward slash dot TV year dot value. Now we're going to get the same name as TV name dot value send role TV role dot value send depth combo dot combo depth dot value and the send manager TV manager dot value and we end up with statement here and now with sheet two we get the last row with content with cells rows count in column A for example dot end Excel app dot row and in dot range A and LR plus one dot value this is gonna be the send date range B L R plus one dot value is going to be the send name or actually no we have one more field here but that we didn't include we can actually get the employee ID automatically so column B is going to be send ID and send ID it could be whatever we have in the previous line so in LR plus 1 but only if LR is greater than 1 else the send ID is gonna be whatever country code or company code you know and then zero zero I will need to get the value of that here okay now I'm gonna copy this right here so in column C we're gonna put the name send name in column D the role and so on and we don't need this line and we end the with statement here so now we just need to associate this macro send form with the button and we do that going back to the sheet module we don't need that now with now with the command button send this one we get by default send click and that's what we need actually so here we're gonna call the send form so if we fill the form and we click send form now we see that has been added to the registry now to clear the form we just need to go back here create another macro clear form And with sheet one, we're gonna leave the date, but we're gonna clear the name, role, department, 
and manager and again we're gonna link that to command button clear And the other command button, rec, is going to bring us to sheet 2, activate. So if we click that, it will just activate this, the other sheet. And if, we clear, and if we click clear form, it will just clear the form. Now we can make it look a bit nicer going to putting that into a shape. And adding a title here, we can make the background transparent here. And apply any other formatting. And now we can group everything. And there you go. That's how we create a simple registration system in Excel using form controls and macros. Thanks for watching.